Hi, and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In today's video for WordPress, I'm going to take you through and show you some of the new features that are available inside Elementor and Elementor Pro. We're going to start off, first of all, with the new global widgets. So let's take a look at that, and then we'll move on to some of the other cool new features that Elementor has added to the latest revision. So let's kick this video off with the large topic of global widgets. Now, if you've got Elementor Pro, you're going to have this new feature, and it's something that really does sort of change the game, shall we say, when you're working with any kind of visual editor for WordPress. Now, normally, when you create any kind of content on a page, you can save it as a template, but each of those different items is an individual component. So if you make a change to it, then it only changes in that instance. Whereas the global widgets, once you define a global widget, it becomes linked to all the other global widgets that use that as the basis. So let's take a look at that in action and see exactly how it works. So if we take a look at the page that I've got, I've just created some simple layouts and everything's done through just basic widgets in Elementor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to easily save one of these out as a global widget and then use it on another page. So let's just say, for example, I want to use this block where I've got the latest three products, for example, as part of my online shop using WooCommerce. Well, what we normally do is when we come up to this, we can come over and you can see we get the little blue box that outlines this particular widget. In the top right hand corner, we've got our four icons that allow us to do four different things. Now we've got the little save icon, and once we do that with Elementor Pro, we now get the option to save this as a global widget. So what I do is going to call this WooCommerce Global One, just for argument's sake. Click on save. Once we've done that, that now changes this from being outlined in blue, and you'll see now everything is outlined in yellow. And if we look on the left-hand side under the Global tab, you'll see we now have WooCommerce Global One. It's now being created. We can click on that, and we can add that to anywhere else on the page. Let's just say, for example, I wanted to add that in this section below. I can just simply drag that down, drop it in there, and you can see we now got a second instance. Once I drop it on the page, we can now go through and do two different things to it. We can edit the entire global widget, so any changes we make will be to every single instance of this widget throughout the entire site, or we can unlink this specific widget and make it a standalone widget so we can make changes to it that won't affect those other different widgets that are using that global widget throughout the entire site. That's a lot of widgets. So if we take a look, we click on edit, you'll see all the normal options are available to us. We can go in, we can change the columns, the products, we can adjust the query on there, go through advanced, make the changes like we normally would in there. However, we can, like I say, create this and set this up now as a standalone widget as well. So if I want to, I can simply come up to this, click to edit it, unlink it. That tells me, are you sure you want to unlink this? Once you do that, then it becomes a regular widget again. So we'll say unlink. You'll see that now changes back to the blue outline and it becomes a standard widget that's independent. So pretty cool, pretty easy. So let's take a look at that in action. Let's just go out of this page and we'll go back, just take care of this. And we'll go into another page and we'll see exactly how easy it is to do this. We'll just add this new section in and create the global widget. So let's just save this so we've got the newest version. And let's just jump back in then to the normal WordPress dashboard. And let's create a new page and put that in there. So we'll come up, click on Add a New Page, and we'll just call this Global Test. Oops, if I can spell. Edit with Elementor, open that back up as normal. Once that loads in, we can now jump over to the Global tab, click on that, and we can now drag this in and drop it onto our page as normal. So let's just drag that over, drop it in there, so we've now got that linked widget in there, that global widget. So let's go through and make some changes to it. Let's, put it, let's just change something about it. Let's go to Edit. And let's just say we want to change this now from three columns to two columns. And we'll just hit save on that. So that page updates. So we've now updated that widget. So let's just jump back to our dashboard. Go back to the previous page. Let's go and look at all our pages. And we'll come down and we'll just choose Elementor Pro, which is the page I originally created. And we'll edit that with Elementor. And we'll see now that the widget has now updated itself to be in two columns instead of three. So you can see if you got this throughout your entire site, it's a very quick and easy way of being able to make a global change to a widget no matter where it's instanced on the website. And if you want to make it independent, it's simply a case of unlinking it and then it becomes a standalone widget. That's not all we can do with global widgets. 
Let's take a look at some of the other things that are available which make this even more powerful. So once that widget has been created, that global widget has been defined, we jump out of our dashboard, out of our page, go back to the dashboard. We'll leave that, that's fine. Let's go take a look at what we've got available to us now. If we come down into the Elementor page and we go to My Library, that'll show us everything we've defined. And you can see that we've got a page, a section, and we now have a widget. Each one of these has a short code. So if I want to take this widget and I want to embed it anywhere in my site where I'm not using Elementor, I can easily do that just by copying that short code and pasting it into the page. So there's a th another way we can use it. And we're not limited to just that. If we come over and take a look at appearance and go into the widget section, so say for example, the footer, we want to drop something in there that is global, like a, a countdown timer or a testimonial or an information box or something. We can come into the widget area for a footer, for example, and all we need to do, you take a look on the left-hand side, we have Elemental Library. So we can drag that over, drop it in any of the widgets we want, title this anything we want, and then we can come down and we can choose from our templates we've got created. So you can see custom header, our template, and our WooCommerce Global One widget. So we can add that in there, give it a title, and that's another way that we can use these global widgets throughout our entire site, not relying on Elementor which I think is one of those things that really does help to step this up to an incredibly powerful piece of software that really does make it working with a complex or sort of, should we say, large website really quick and easy. So that's global widgets. Now, there's one other thing I want to show you while we're on the subject of dealing with Elementor. If we're going to come back into the page we previously created, so we're just going to come back into all pages, and we'll come down to the page that I've just set up, which is the global test. Now, let's open up Elementor again. And once we're in there, we've now got the option to do some more things. So let's just say, for example, now, I kind of like this page and I want to create something else. I want to try a couple of different layouts on this. So let's just say I want to add a new, new piece of content in there. So I'm going to come down, add a new section. We'll set that up and I'll just drop an image in there. Don't really bother what this actually is. And we'll just choose an image. Again, I'm not really bothered about what image I'm using or how it's all set up. So let's just say, yeah, I'm happy with that. And I'll just move that back up to the top of the page. So let's just drag that up. Drop that we want. So we've made some changes to the page. So let's just save that. And let's just say, uh, let's try a different picture in there. Let's just see what it looks like with a different image and make some just general changes to it. So let's try this one and let's adjust the, the padding and spacing at the bottom. I don't really like that. So let's just go on to there and Come to advanced and we'll say we want to put a margin at the bottom of say for example 50 pixels so there we go so we now separate that and think oh, okay then which one do i like let's just save that out again well once i've done that i can now come to the top left hand corner of the elemental editor column and you can see we've got a range of different options and the new feature we have is revision history i can click and expand that and you can see we've now got various different revisions based upon the time that we saved them alongside auto saves so let's just say I want to jump back through these different revisions. I can simply click on one. I'll go back to the previous one. Uh, do I like that one? Let's take a look at it before I put anything in there. Mm, not really sure which one I like. So I can go through and I can set up various different versions of this. And when I find the one that I'm happy with, I can click apply. That will now make that the page version, but it doesn't get rid of the revision history. So at any point in the future, I can just say, actually, I preferred the one I did originally with, with this picture in there. And then I can apply that one. So I can quickly and easily go through and create multiple different versions of our site and work with the revision history very quickly and easily, all inside Elementor. Again, this is just one of those little well thought out additions to an already great piece of software. And if it keeps on going like this, I think this is definitely going to become the best visual editor out there for WordPress. That's a pretty heady statement. Anyway, that pretty much wraps up what I want to cover on the new Elementor Pro, so the new features that have been added into it. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else covered on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, take care.